thank you everybody for coming by Mr. Pace special edition of Woman Hills Exposed. A report on the November 7th board meeting that took place at 11720 Woman Hills Drive, Peyton, Colorado. This affects the lives of individuals that live within the Woman Hills Metropolitan District, so please, if you could, pay attention. What you saw me strewn about the table was documents that I've been reading and looking at. I was unable to get to the courthouse to get the update on the four-way versus four-way ranch lawsuit that's currently pending in the 4th Judicial District. What I can tell you, and I want to explain this to you so you'll understand just exactly what it is and how much effort it takes to gather a lot of information to do a lot of investigation to get you this much truth, okay? There could be as many as 100 man hours just in an investigative report. And that's why reporters do their due diligence to make sure that they bring you the facts. I'm, and I'm one of those people that believe that in order for me to make sure that I have the accurate information, I want to be able to read the documents, go through them, and bring you the best information I have at the time I make the story. One of the things I want to tell you about is we had a meeting last night that was covered. I don't know if we're going to have another one in the month of November because of the holiday. I can tell you this, based on the information I received at the meeting from the employees of the district and the board and its lawyer. I was right. And the reason why I can tell you I was right is because every time I hear the words that come out of the mouths of the individuals in this district, it further verifies and clarifies for me that the information I gave you years ago was 100% spot on. I can tell you unequivocally that developers, outside interest, and people with a financial stake in this district were guiding board members. Now, I don't know if that's still going on to the to the degree that it was before. I don't think so. What I do know is this. We have one person by the name of Daniel Cole who doesn't need to be here anymore. We're paying him somewhere between seventy and $100,000 a year. We're paying a lawyer because he's a water lawyer. I don't care what he is. He's Green's lawyer. And he was brought in here to do a job. He's not an SDA lawyer. He doesn't know anything about open records. He doesn't know anything about transparency. I'll leave that for later on. The meeting last night went well. We can thank John Martin for asking some very good questions and Mr. Reimers, who did an outstanding job of coming forward with stuff that we discussed seven years ago. Mr. Reimers did a very good job. And the thing that bothers me is he sent this information to Troy, who basically said, well, you've kissed my ring. Now you can speak. I don't work like that. The facts were pretty easy to lay out because it was something that was discussed before in a meeting I was in. Troy wants to take credit for everything. The problem is, Troy, you're a day late and about 10 years short. All of the items that were brought up, and Mr. Rimes did a great job. I mean, I remember the arguments we had in that meeting while Troy was trying to cut me off because he wants to take credit for the world. No. The issue became that they couldn't adjust the bills for people with smaller families versus higher families because the disproportionate difference was that large. Yes, I agree that the elderly here should get a break on their bills. I absolutely believe that. I absolutely believe we need to go to winter billing for the uh, sewage at part of the bill. I also believe that we're overpaying for park and rec. I also believe we're overpaying for several items. But the problem is this. The big elephant in the room, debt. And we're responsible for paying back the actions of a board that made poor decisions, poor decisions previously. Now, although this board's claiming we're gonna clean up the mess, doesn't matter how you clean up the mess, okay? One of those messes that reared its ugly head is the four-way ranch matter. And I'm gonna make this real easy. One versus two. Peter Martz, it's all you need to know. I warned this district a long time ago that you need to watch out for snake oil salesmen, okay? And being sold a bill of goods. What happened was, part of four-way ranch that is on sewer and septic, basically, or septic, I apologize, and have their own wells don't need to be involved in any IGA where we have to give them pretty much anything. It's, 40, it's the houses that are over here off of Woman Hills Drive behind that church. Now, we have sections of it called Waterbury, and those are developments that have to do with this, that, and the other thing. And all they need from us is our wastewater. Now, there's 500 taps at stake. Those 500 taps were $6,500, as I verified with Mr. Jacobson, our current uh, director and we'll figure out where that goes from here, but that's a little over $3 million. 
That $3 million, along with the deal in the IGA, intergovernmental agreement that we signed, I was against, to let them build a lift station. Well, now we have a problem. They don't have money. Add that on to the $3 million, and you're looking at 4.7 to $5 million, okay? Just round numbers, okay? Because I make this easy on everybody. What that means is, is that that money that was designated as income was also in the bonds. I went and looked. That's what this paperwork is for. Now, that may, in fact, detrimentally affect the bonds, but did anybody bother to ask a bond person? No, because I was in the room listening to them talk about it. Because if that does, that's going to affect all of us. That's lost income. That is lost repayment money. That was money that was supposed to come in here to alleviate our burden. Now, now you know where I stand on why I said don't do what you're doing. See, when you have a developer influence board or an outside interest board or people that are outside doing what they're doing, right, that becomes the problem. When you influence these boards, and these boards don't know what they're doing because they don't have master's degree in boardsmanship, that's the problem. I'm against it, 100%. Okay, when you get the wool pulled over your eyes, that's it. Okay, at the next meeting, I'm going to ask a very tough question of the board, and they're not going to like it. So... As I said, when things start to come around and you realize that Mr. Pace was telling the truth, but being under siege and under the gun and in court kind of makes you go, let's just Ron talking. No, it's Ron trying to tell you in his best way that what I was doing was looking out for all 3,000 houses and all these other customers, because this is our home. This is our community. These are our kids. These are our futures, or this is our future. I don't care what someone across the street's doing. I don't care what they're doing down in El Paso County. And I don't care what they're doing at the Capitol unless it affects us and our wallet. What happened last night will affect our wallet. Mark my words. Now, and let's get to Gene, okay? And, and, and this issue over comments made. I will hold Gene Casalino and the district staff and the board members accountable when the time comes appropriately. And that will happen. My investigation has now led me to be able to prove that this district knew by hiring the lawyer we have now what was going to happen. I now had somebody else come forward and tell me that straight up. Walk right up to me. I couldn't believe it. I was a little stunned. Don't worry about it. Things happen. Now, I wanted to find out about an issue that was brought up at the meeting about a BK. I'm not going to get, elaborate on it because I was unable to call up the courts and get that information, but I will as soon as I can. You know me. I'm good for that. Let's go to the issue over, um, over capital investments, improvements, and savings. One rule. Yes, you can take our money and actually stockpile cash for a capital improvement of a certain magnitude and a certain size, but if you do not use that money for that capital improvement, then you have to either give the money back or use the money to pay off something else. They just admitted last night that they had in fact saved money for that plant and that money was never used for that purpose. Why should you be mad right now? Well, when you take money from somebody and tell them what you're using it for and don't use that money for its intended purpose, what is that called? Well, there's a lot of words I can use, but deception would be one and fraud is the other. When you perpetrate a fraud on this community and have me still here, that's a concern for everybody. I don't care if you're a judge, a lawyer, a doctor, a scientist, a police officer, a house worker, a blue collar worker, a white collar worker, if you got more money than you need ever in your life to get on with everything, at the end of the day, do you want people misleading you? Do you really? No, you don't. You certainly don't want your local water district doing it. The money they amassed in the bank is why I'm not upset tonight. I was right. You won't see a flyer coming out saying that, and you won't see a flyer running around this district going, now, we tried to screw the pooch. You did. What you did was basically take our money to do something and then not use it for that. In a meeting I had earlier this month, or it could have actually been last month, there was a discussion held about just exactly why they were doing that with the money. I knew what was going on, but I was called a liar by your elected officials and this district 
when in reality I was telling the truth the whole time. I don't know what everybody's issue is with me, but I know finances fairly well. I learned it the hard way, but you didn't listen. Some of you folks were led to believe that I'm the worst thing since Charles Manson. Not true. See, and that's the hardest thing to do is to have to come out here and explain to you in this fashion what I know. Here's what I know. Jerry Jacobson made a statement, and I wrote a lot of things down last night. And one of the things I can tell you is, if you didn't use the money, the $8 million something, I think is what I calculated in the unrestricted cash fund, then you should have taken that money just before you signed those documents and paid off the park and rec debt, which would have gotten rid of these resolutions and then gotten rid of the compulsory payment for the park and rec. And the only reason we have it is because of that building and the building over here, which was only two point. Six million dollars in total funds, or seven. You'll have to excuse me on the numbers. I don't have all of them right in front of me. What that meant is once we paid that debt off, the only fee that was left, according to this document, right here, the one that we have, the one that I posted earlier, okay, about the nine hundred thousand dollars, is a maintenance fee. That's all that's in this resolution is the maintenance fee. That's all you'd be responsible for. That takes your bill from about sixty bucks all the way down to about twenty. That means your bill goes down, oh, about $40. Well, not, let's not go with 40 It's $37, $38 a month. Wouldn't you like to see a lower bill? But I was telling the truth. And not only that, we could have paid off that debt. We could have actually lowered the other bond, which would have taken that bond and that number down. Not rocket science. The sad fact is Jerry Jacobson verified exactly what I was telling you all by him making the statement that he did. The money was taken for you for the purposes of building that building and when they couldn't and when they had the consultant Benjamin Green and Gene and anybody else that was involved doing what they were doing including Bieber Stowe who's retired who can still be brought out of retirement trust me is that they basically pulled the wool over 3,000 customers eyes except mine. Well, maybe may a few other people there. I apologize. Why? Why did they overcharge you for all those years? Because they knew what they needed to do. They knew they needed the money for the plant, so they started raising the bills and took your money. And that's what I said, didn't I? You probably didn't listen. You're probably wondering, boy, his voice is changing. Yeah, because see, I'm not under the gun, I'm not going to court, and I'm not in jail. And I'm not the man depicted in those flyers because developers wanted you to believe that I was a psychotic individual who you couldn't count on. Mr. Stinson and the Stinson family, you might want to tell your husband to resign because I'm not going to kiss your ring. I don't do that. Okay? And the fact of the matter was, Mr. Reimers did a great job coming up there last night. But this is something we were told couldn't be done because we have to maintain a minimum. Even if we adjust the bills, the problem becomes, Mr. Reimers, and I agree with you. I 100% agree with you. I think the elderly people here pay way too much. I think we all pay way too much. I want everybody in filing 11, whether you vote for me or not, and do anything for me. Listen to what other people are doing now, okay? All these ideas were hashed around, Mr. Reimers, years ago, and I... While everybody was thinking I'm the biggest dirtbag since God knows what, Jeffrey Dahmer and a few other people, you have to understand something. At the end of the day, I do agree with one thing. We all have to pay this bill. And because of bad decisions by bad boards and outside influences, our debt should be about $12 million less. And I tried the best I could under the circumstances to do that for you. Even if I don't like you, even if I don't like Micah Howell and anybody that he knows, even if I don't like the LePages, even if I don't like somebody, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that you can afford to pay that bill and not be sent to collections or humiliated by your tax bill or anything like that. How unreasonable is that? Mr. Stinson is going to be leaving the board because he failed in his transparency promise. 
Mr. Stinson failed to work with other board members, and we all now know, as confirmed, that Lukens and Ryder and Troy are like this. And that's why they can't accomplish anything on the board. So I'm asking you as the citizens of this district to trust me in telling you that Troy Stinson should be removed as the president immediately and have Sherry Ringan placed as the president because apparently Troy stated he's only going to be the president for two years. Well, that's not how it works. Every year they can realign the board. And I'm asking you that based on what Russell Ryder has done and not done, Lukens has done and not done, and Troy has, has done and, and clearly done, okay, is not live up to their promises. Okay, because Sherry Ringan has told me straight to my face she wants transparency, but Troy, Russell, and Carl are blocking it. Fact. I'm still behind you, Sherry. Don't worry about it. I'm still a coasty, okay? And once a coasty, always a coasty. All right. Now you know. Please take the information I gave you. Talk to your wife. Talk to your husband. Talk to your significant other. Whatever you do, just for once, realize this. I'm not the enemy. Have a good night.